What's up, everyone? Welcome to the special draft edition episode of the Patel and Kumar Show. I'm your host, Shivam Patel, coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. And my co-host, Mr. Kumar, coming to you live from Mumbai, India. Mr. Kumar, I cannot tell you how excited we are to be back. And first of all, I hope everyone had a very happy Diwali and a wonderful time. And Mr. Kumar, I'm the happiest person in the world because the NBA season is around the corner and starting very soon. Absolutely. A very, very happy Diwali, folks. And welcome back to the Patel and Kumar NBA talk show. And as Mr. Patel said, I am equally excited because we have a lot of NBA news. The NBA season is about to start. The draft has taken place. And of course, free agency starts day after tomorrow. So we have a lot of material to cover in this particular show. And of course, we ha also have the gorgeous Prachi Telan joining us in the Indian Sarka section. So Mr. Patel, what an exciting show we have. And uh, we can get started with the draft first. And, uh, you know, it was, it, it was really crazy because the entire world expected La Melo Ball to get drafted uh, as a number one one pick but a Minnesota just pulled a rabbit out of the hat yes it was completely surprised to me Mr. Kumar that the Minnesota Timberwolves selected Anthony Edwards with the number one overall pick and I think it was a good selection you know because Anthony Edwards is a very powerful guard um he's big he's 6'6 225 he can get downhill um he'll play well with um D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns and bring a young talent because Mr. Kumar the Timberwolves need talent right now because they've been just atrocious this year. So I think it's a good ad for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Absolutely. And uh, uh, number two, James Wiseman. He is a seven foot uh, one inch center. And uh, exactly what uh, probably the Golden State Warriors needed. Uh, but it's just a little bit of bad news coming in from the Warriors team in terms of Clay Thompson. I think we got to wait and watch in terms of what happens to his injury. But I think it was a good selection for the Golden State Warriors because he can probably come off the bench right at the start and give them some kind of minutes and probably a combination of uh, Steph Curry, Dramon Green, uh, Wiggins, and of course, if Clay Thompson is healthy, uh, you know, he could, he could be, a, 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 you know, a better prospect than probably the others in the draft. So I think it was a good selection uh, Very for good. Uh, Golden State Warriors. Yeah. It was a very good selection because he's 7'1", like Mr. Kumar said, 7'6", wingspan, number one recruit in high school, and he's just a big, athletic, uh, big man. Um, he can really run the floor like a deer. Um, he'll be great in pick and roll, and he's going to winning culture, Mr. Kumar, so that'll develop him the right way. Absolutely, and Manish, thank you for your comment. We were looking forward to it, and it's great to see your comments as well, so please Keep connecting with us on the chat on YouTube and Facebook channels. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll probably have a more interactive show. So moving on, I think the uh, I think it's very surprising that La Melo Ball actually moved to the number three spot uh, with the Charlotte Hornets. So I think this guy has probably uh, the most potential, uh, according to a lot of people. Um, he's played internationally in Lithuania. He's played internationally in the Australian NBL. Uh, so, I mean, he, he was pulled out of high school by his dad. His brother went number two uh, to the Lakers. And of course, he was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans later on for Anthony Davis. But, uh, you know, is he, is he going to be a baller or is he going to be a bust? I mean, that's, that remains to be seen because uh, the ceiling is pretty high. He needs to develop uh, his shooting. Uh, he's not a great shooter yet. He needs to improve on his defense. Uh, uh -huh. I just hope the system in Charlotte basically, uh, you know, helps him uh, develop into a good potential player. And I think it will because Charlotte has some young players on P.J. Washington, Devontae Graham, Miles Bridges, and they're going to run up and down the floor, and he's a perfect guy to have the ball in his hands. He's very flashy. Um, he can get to the lane. Um, he, he needs to improve his shooting that starts with the shooting mechanics. Um, he shoots from like his chin all the way up to his chest. So like it's not, it shoots from too low of a release. 
um, that's going to be stuffed in the NBA. They're going to eat on that. So he's got to improve. Also with shot selection, Mr. Gumar, if you remember the game that he scored 92 points in high school, he was like pulling up from half court. Like it was crazy. And he's not going to be able to do that in the NBA. And I think if he continues to improve his shot selection, his shooting percentages will be a lot better. But I think he has a very high ceiling. And Mr. Kumar, we had a poll that's, that asked the audience, who will have a better career, LaMelo or Lonzo? And it looked like 58% of the audience said LaMelo Ball. What do you think, Mr. Kumar? Uh, well, I mean, it's pretty too early to say uh, what's going to be uh, the situation for LaMelo Ball. Uh, Lonzo Ball was drafted as a number two pick by the Lakers, and they promised him uh, to be the me next Magic Johnson for the Lakers, <laughs> but that didn't happen. Uh, I think the problem is, especially with their dad, Lavar Ball, who sets a very high expectation from them. So they are, they are target as soon as they come into the league. Uh, same is the case with Lamelo Ball. I mean, uh, they expect him to be uh, like the rookie of the year, or be a, uh, you know get into a good team, be be one of the best players. So when you have such expectations, it's very hard to sometimes maintain that momentum. And yeah. you know you're so much under pressure, uh, and especially coming into the NBA from uh, playing in other international leagues, it's a totally contrasting situation. Uh, so it's it's going to be hard for uh, somebody like the Ball brothers. So, of course, he was traded. Uh, uh, the brother Lonzo Ball was traded from the Lakers to the New Orleans Pelicans. And Lavar Ball actually claimed that the Lakers will never win a championship. And they won the championship in just the first year they traded him. So, I mean, I, I think it's very important that the bar is set a little bit low. Uh, give them room for improvement because this league is going to test you. Uh, yeah. There are like veteran players, there are champions, and it's not so easy uh, to come off and just play, uh, you know, uh, you know, great basketball right at the start. You, I mean, you don't have, you can't have everybody to be like a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant or a Kevin Garnett who came out of high school and dominated the game right from the start. Right, and those guys were physically able to dominate the game. LaMelo was still growing into his ball body, and he's still trying to get a little bit bigger and stronger. And like you said, Mr. Kumar, he's going against grown men trying to feed their families. They're not going to let a, a you know <coughs> dominate them, but I think LaMelo has the skills. But all I can say is, Mr. Kumar, do you remember a couple years ago, LaVar said he could beat Michael Jordan in one-on-one? -on -one? Well, let's see if that actually is going to happen. They got a chance. Let's see if LaVar can put his play to where his mouth is and he, if he can beat Michael Jordan in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, of course, I hope he doesn't beat him. So, uh, otherwise, LaMelo Ball gets shipped out too from Charlotte. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Michael Jordan would be like, see ya. See ya. So, yeah. But, 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 I'm, yeah, but I'm really surprised uh, by this draft because I really thought – uh, you know, a lot of people were hoping there'd be a lot of uh, uh, probably uh, trades in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the top picks being traded to another team and trying to get players in, stuff like that, especially with the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Uh, but I think they just held on to number two pick. And, uh, uh, you know, so, so it, it's pretty much uh, a good choice for the Golden State Warriors. We did ask the audience as well if they should keep that pick or trade that pick and i think a majority of them uh wanted to keep that pick if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah keep the pick exactly and i would have kept that pick too mr kumar because they needed a big guy and you know i think they made the right selection with wiseman and we also asked who will be the number one pick in the draft and Lamelo got the most at 53 percent um wiseman coming at second and only 17 percent said edwards mr kumar and those 17 percent were right on the money with anthony edwards being selected at number one Absolutely. And uh, you know, it was a surprising pick by the Minnesota because everybody thought it's going to be LaMelo Ball going to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, but I think getting a guard, a shooting guard, uh, he, he's a decent shooter and he's good on defense as well. So mm -hmm. I think uh, it remains to be seen, uh, you know, how he develops because this draft class is, it was definitely not one of those impressive draft classes that you have. Uh, right. And of course, these players also didn't get uh, an opportunity to play uh, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, the season was canceled because of the pandemic. 
So uh, it, it was a gamble for a lot of teams. Uh, it really and was. The draft, yeah. And, it really was. Because you were there, was talking no, there was no combine. Sorry to cut you off, uh, Mr. Gumar, but there was no combine. They had to do Zoom meetings. And I think that really showed that teams were not willing to trade up to number one and number two with the Timberwolves <laughs> Warriors because they were saying – even when the uh, Timberwolves were on the clock, they were trying to field calls, but nobody was really responding and really wanted to trade up to them. So that kind of showed in this draft class. And Mr. Kumar, before I uh, before I hand it back out, over to you, this draft class might be like 2013, where a player like Giannis Antetokounmpo, who actually went 13th, may be the best player in this class. Maybe a mid round first a first rounder player, maybe maybe the top of this class. Absolutely. So I, I do have a, a few of the players, especially Dani Avia from uh, Israel. Uh, he played for the Tel Aviv Maccabi team along with Amari Stoudemire. He actually went down the draft. I thought he yeah. was probably in the top five. Uh, I think it was uh, a good pick for the Washington Wizards uh, getting him uh, because he's proven to, I mean, he's one of the youngest, uh, you know, players to win MVP in the Israeli Basketball League. So He's got some, you know, good professional experience. Uh, and I also thought Obi Topin uh, would have got picked in the top five as well. So right. the New York Knicks uh, getting him is also uh, because he was considered probably uh, to be like uh, a candidate for the rookie of the year. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, so it, it remains to be seen uh, what happens to these guys, because because ultimately, this is like a lottery, you know. I mean, yeah. sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So, right. but the chances are that you know some of these guys can really uh, come up big for these teams. Right, and yeah, Obi Toppin did fall. Benny Abita did fall. I saw some memes on Twitter that saying <laughs> Obi was crying because he had to go to the New York Knicks, but he's a Jersey kid, so he's he's going home. Mr. Kumar, the Washington Wizards seem like they love international prospects. They have Mo Wagner from <laughs> Turkey, Rui Hachimura from Japan. And now Denny Advita from Israel and Serbia. So, but I, I also I was surprised, Mr. Kumar, that at the number four pick, the Chicago Bulls pick Patrick Williams, small forward from Florida State. He was projected to go seven through ten, but you were hearing rumors throughout the draft process that the that the Bulls really loved um, Patrick Williams, and I they think he's going to be a good fit with Zach Levine and you know Wendell Carter Jr. So let's see how he's going to play. Um, he's coming from a great Florida State program. That's been winning a lot. They actually had two first-round picks. And I think he, he's going to be a high impactful player. But let's see how many All-Stars we have in this draft, Mr. Kumar. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, Detroit had, like, three top 20 picks, you know. So <laughs> I just hope, uh, you know, they, they drafted Killian Hayes from France, uh, I think, in the seventh or eighth pick that they had. Yeah. Uh, then they had Stewart. And so I think, uh, again, I, I don't know what works for Detroit, and but they had probably the most number of picks in the top 20. Right, they did. And lastly, before we move on, I got to talk about my Spurs, Mr. Kumar, the number 11 pick. I like it, a Devin Vassell. He's super long, rangy, 6'8". Um, he plays defense. Um, he's improving his shot. So let's see if, how the Spurs develop him and whether he can be a solid pro because the Spurs needed wings, and I think they addressed it with uh, Devin Vassell. The important thing about Spurs is they always, you know, come up with, you know, a rabbit out of the hat situation in the draft. You know, uh, even Leonard, uh, mm -hmm. you know, got, uh, he was, I mean, he was picked like, I think 13th or 14th, uh, uh, you know, in the draft. And so, and some of these guys have really developed into uh, superstars for mm -hmm. the Spurs. So, uh, so uh, good luck to the Spurs, uh, <laughs> you know, but because they do have a great, um, you know, development mentality. Yeah. So, uh, so I just hope they pick the right, right, right guy uh, for the team. Right. Let's see how Devin Vassell, uh, you know, um, blends with the Spurs team, and hopefully, you know, the Spurs are in rebuilding mode, they'll get back to the top pretty soon. But we got to move on, Mr. Kumar, to some free agent and trade news. And the biggest news so far has been Chris Paul going to the Phoenix Suns, going to the desert, Mr. Kumar. What are your immediate thoughts about this trade when it broke? Well, uh, the immediate thought was definitely the Oklahoma uh, City Thunder basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, didn't want to pay up, right? I mean, he, he, he's owed somewhere around $34, $35 million next year. So they're offloading his contract. And they, I mean, and, and Phoenix Suns is a promising team. 
Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the West is really stacked. They did play a great basketball uh, in the bubble. They won all eight of their, uh, you know, uh, league games. But at the end, they couldn't qualify for the playoffs or the play-in tournament. So they have a good chance of qualifying for the playoffs this year. And they get a veteran leader in the form of Chris Paul. But at the same time, he's going to be 36 years old. And, yep. you know, his production is going to drop. So, I, I, I mean, you can't expect him to play 35 minutes, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the Phoenix Suns. I would, I would put him somewhere between 25 and 28 minutes and giving you about 15, po 15 points, 7 or 8 assists a game. And he can become that great support uh, for a player, player like Devin Booker. I think he does, and I think the um, the Phoenix Suns are going to need to find a backup point guard, but you hit it on the head, Mr. Kumar. He's going to be 36 by the time the playoffs come. You can't expect him. You saw a couple years in Houston when they played the Warriors. His body just completely broke down. But I really like this as he's going to be a great leader for Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden. Um, he's going to bring a winning mindset. Um, he's going to he's going to be a great floor general. He's going to be able to find Devin Booker and Aiden and put them in the right spots you know, to be successful. And I really like this move, you know, for the Phoenix Suns. And that shows Devin Booker that, hey, you know, you can stay here and we're trying to build a winning team and you can develop and, and continue your career in Phoenix. And I think that's the biggest win that the Phoenix Suns made in this trade is convincing Devin Booker that the Phoenix Suns are going to be a contender in the future. Absolutely. And uh, they have a very nice young coach. They have a very nice young core uh, with DeAndre Ayton and, uh, you know, Devin Booker. So, uh, definitely, Chris Paul's presence is really going to help that team mature and probably, you know, go over that hump in terms of qualifying for the playoffs after like a decade or so. So, uh, you know, so good luck to the Phoenix Suns and good luck to CP3 as well. Yeah, good luck to CP3. You know, he he really resurrected his career, you know, having a great season with Oklahoma City, had a lot of demand. But Mr. Kumar, I see the Suns as a team that's going to fight for the sixth through the eighth spot. You know, they're going to play in the play-in tournament. Um, they might give a little scare to a team in the first round, but I think the Suns are still in the back half of the Western Conference. But it's exciting, you know. The, um, Chris Paul going to the Suns makes the NBA more competitive, more competitive balance. So I'll take it, Mr. Kumar. And more importantly, I mean, they got to be somewhere between that 7th and ninth to 10th ranked team because, wow. again, there's going to be a play-in tournament, you know, uh, for the 7th and 8th seed. So they do get that opportunity as well if, if you know, they're pretty close to, uh, you know, the 8th seed team. So, uh, so there is a lot of upside for Phoenix Suns uh, and not a, not a lot of downside, except for, of course, they would have to pay CP3 a lot of money. Right, they had to pay him a lot of money, but I guess that goes with building a contender. And he's also, one last point is, he's going to hold DeAndre um, Aiden accountable. You know, last year he made the mistake of taking the PEDs and being suspended for 25 games. He showed a little immaturity. So Chris Paul, being that veteran presence in the locker room, is really going to set this Phoenix Suns team straight and bring a veteran leader and presence to this team. Another trade that happened, Mr. Kumar, was True Holiday went to the Milwaukee Bucks for a couple first-round picks to the Pelicans. So what do you think about this fit, Mr. Kumar, True Holiday teaming up with Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton? Yeah, apart from Drew Holiday, that's also, of course, uh, a sign-and-trade deal for Bogdan Bogdanovich. But actually, I don't know if it's confirmed. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it hasn't been confirmed yet. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's talks about that as well, that the deal has taken place, but it'll be signed in a couple of days. So we uh, we have to wait for that confirmation. But I think uh, what the Milwaukee Bucks have done is uh, got some time uh, with Giannis in terms of probably uh, uh, making him stay in Milwaukee and sign that max extension in the, uh, when they offer him in December. Uh, so, yes, uh, Drew Holiday has been, uh, you know, one of those top point guards uh, in the league. He's a great defender. And uh, they, of course, shipped out some of those old stars like George Hill and Eric Bledsoe uh, to, to, to the uh, uh, New Orleans Pelicans. So, and, and a couple of picks as well. So, um, so, if Drew Holiday, Giannis and Bogdanovich combine together, I think it'll be a fantastic team. Because they'll have, apart from these three guys, they'll have Chris Middleton and, uh, you know, Lopez in the lineup. Right, right. And I think it's going to be a great you know, 
fit with Giannis um, because Drew doesn't always look for his own shot. You know, he tries to get others involved. So I think he'll put Giannis in the right spots. But also, Giannis is struggling or the defense is focusing too much on him. The guy can get his own shot, you know, whether it's going from three mid-range I'm going to the rim. Like Mr. Kumar alluded to, he'll be a great defender. And really what played the Bucks against the Heat was they didn't defend at a high level like they needed to. So I think he'll bring that. Um, like Bogdan Bogdanovich, you know, there's questions about whether he's actually going to sign with the Milwaukee Bucks and, you know, be a free agent. But if they happen to get him, that's just another shooter they can surround, you know, Yacht with. So I think this was good for the Bucks, but also for the Pelicans, Mr. Kumar, that they were able Get rid of, you know, Drew Holiday completely to the youth movement, you know, get a couple of picks to be able to design Williamson and company. So I think this trade worked out well for both teams. Mr. Kumar, I think the Bucks have solidified themselves as a top two team in the Eastern Conference. Absolutely. I mean, the East, uh, of course, apart from uh, the Nets who already uh, signed up Kevin Durant and uh, Kyrie Irving last, last season. Uh, you know, the Bucks are the major East teams to make a move so far. And, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's a tough situation for other teams. We don't know what's going to happen uh, with the Toronto Raptors, with the Miami Heat, uh, the Indiana Pacers. I mean, Victor Oladipo's situation also needs to be considered. So the East uh, is, uh, you know, pretty much open. I think uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, of course, Milwaukee Bucks have strengthened their squad, so they, they are going to be contenders along with the Brooklyn Nets. They were the top team last season as well. Uh, so it, it, it's going to be uh, interesting to watch what's going to happen in the East uh, because uh, the other teams, like, I mean, they have a lot of free agents. Like in Toronto, there is uh, Fred Van Vliet, Sergei Ibaka, uh, you know, uh, Marc Gasol has already chosen to probably play in the Spanish League. So... Uh, a lot of teams have still a lot of moves to make. So let, let's let's hope that, you know, the East becomes stronger. But I think moving on to the West, the Lakers also made a move uh, with Dennis Schroeder. Uh, I mean, shipping out Danny Green and their 28th pick uh, in this draft for Dennis Schroeder. And adding that has probably increased, uh, you know, the value of the Lakers because they didn't, they have a situation with Rajon Rondo. They have a situation with KCP. They have a situation with Dwight Howard. So, I mean, the free agency signing starts day after tomorrow. So it, they just wanted to be on the safe side. And this move uh, basically gives them an additional scorer, uh, you know, and a ball controller when probably LeBron is, uh, you know, not on the court. Uh, so he's been shooting 38% uh, from the three-point line in the bubble. Uh, and he's a decent scorer. He's been averaging about, you know, uh, 15, 17 points a game. But he's not a great playmaker because he's only had like about, you know, four or five assists uh, in, in, uh, uh, for the OKC. But I, I like this move. I like, uh, you know, giving that support to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Right, and I'm sure you were talking about the Dennis Shooter, uh, Mr. Kumar. And I do really like yes. this move also. Um, I apologize, everyone. I was having a little bit of internet connection or internet issues, so I'm, I'm back. But uh, regarding Dennis Shooter. That's okay. I got, I, I, got some loan, <laughs> I got some loan screen time. <laughs> oh, man, that's good, Mr. Kumar. So I, I think that Dennis Shooter is a pretty good move. You know, for the Los Angeles Lakers, I think I actually think he's an upgrade to Rajon Rondo because, first of all, he's more athletic. Um, he has more scoring ability. Um, he's not the passer that Rondo is. But the Lakers need scoring and someone else to be able to handle handle the ball. You know, besides LeBron James. So I like Dennis Schroeder also. Um, he's a very tenacious defender. Um, he'll get uh, underneath your skin. Um, he's very physical. Um, he plays hard. And I think he's been an underrated player for a long time in the NBA, Mr. Kumar. He's been one of my favorite players to watch in regards to hustle and physicality. So I think Dennis uh, Schroeder is an excellent move. And I think they did this move, Mr. Kumar, because I think they think that Rondo is either going to go to the um, Hawks or the Clippers. And I think they're just doing it just in case that they lose Rajon Rondo. So solid move by the Los Angeles Lakers, the defending champs. Absolutely, and they, of course, shipped, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say they shipped out Danny Green, but uh, Danny Green wasn't really himself 
you know, uh, you know, uh, I mean, this past season. I mean, he was not the original uh, Danny Green, and of course, uh, one of those games where he Drum shot five. a brick. <laughs> but I mean, Danny Green gets shipped to OKC, and OKC ship him to uh, Philadelphia. So Philadelphia also has been making a lot of moves. They shipped out Al Harford. They got Seth Curry in. They moved out Josh Richardson. Yeah. So, Philadelphia, I mean, yeah. Darren Morey has been really busy. <laughs> Darren Morey is getting busy and not dizzy. Man, I love what Darren Morey has been doing, you know, getting shooters around Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. You know, they got Seth Curry from the Mavericks. They got, you know, Danny Green. I think they're trying to replicate it in a couple years ago when the 76ers were the third seed in the East and they just had Marco Bellinelli, Ilya Silver, and a bunch of shooters around Ben Simmons and Embiid. And, Mr. Kumar, the Sixers are creeping back up in the East. And I, I, I've i always been a fan of the Sixers, you know, just because I love watching Joel and B play. He's been one of my favorite players to watch. And I think they have a chance to make some noise because they still have Tobias Harris. You know, of course, Ben Simmons, Joel and B. It's all about scoring for them, Mr. Kumar. We already know they can play defense, but you got to score in this today's NBA. And they're getting shooters around this team. And I think this team has a chance to be a very good offensive team. Absolutely, because, I mean, there is a big, big if uh, in terms of Ben Simmons, because he absolutely cannot shoot. Uh, and we don't know if he's going to come out this season, improve his shooting, or, or what's the story going to be. So ultimately, if uh, Ben Simmons is a great player, great point guard, who can really defend well, and who can probably, you know, dominate a little bit in, from the inside the paint. But they had that... A uh, big shortcoming in terms of, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I mean, shooting uh, with Ben Simmons on the floor. Yeah. Uh, so of course, uh, you know, getting in Danny Green and hopefully Danny Green, you know, continues his, uh, uh, you know, better shooting percentage. And Seth Curry can, of course, I mean, he's been a great performer for the Mavericks last season. Right. And even if Danny Green can't get back to his regular shooting ways, at least he's a threat on the floor. The defense has to respect him, Mr. Kumar. And Seth Curry had some big games. You know, Luka Doncic really trusted him. And <coughs> regarding to Ben Simmons, let's see. This is the year he can finally shoot. I don't know. On Instagram, Mr. Kumar, he posts all these videos of him working out, him shooting. He's been doing that the last three off seasons, but he doesn't even take a shot during the regular season. So I don't know if it's a mental thing, Mr. Kumar, or if he's not comfortable doing it. But I think this is a make or break year for Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, you know, and their tandem. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, a new coach coming in, Doc Rivers, uh, you know, maybe that helps him. So let's hope for the best, you know, uh, let's hope that he comes out on the field, you know, uh, you know, shoot, I mean, shooting 50% from the field. <laughs> oh, man, that'll be the Sixers' dream, Mr. Kumar. They would go crazy if that happened. If, they, if he shoots 50%, you might have a championship in Philadelphia. But, Mr. Kumar, the big question is on rumors, will James Harden be traded to the Nets? Hmm, very interesting, Mr. Kumar. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that Houston stays put. Uh, if I were the Houston Rockets, I wouldn't trade him unless I get a really big piece. Yeah. Um, so I I'm going to ask the Brooklyn Nets, hey, I mean, uh, you know, <clears throat> Either give me Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving, you know, if, if because you're pretty much uh, <clears throat> shipping out an MVP player, uh, MVP level player who has been the top scorer in this league almost for the last three seasons. So uh, if I if I need to give up something so big, I need to get back something big as well. Exactly. And I heard some rumors that, you know, they might do a swap um, between, you know, the Kyrie might go to the Rockets and James Harden might go to the Nets because James Harden and Kevin Durant play a little bit better together. But I think that, yeah, the Rockets are trying to ask for a lot and the Nets are making everybody available, but uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, but, th but the Rockets really want one of those two guys. But I don't think this is going to happen. I think Mr. Kumar hit it on the head that the Rockets are going to play with uh, Russell Westbrook and James Harden see how it goes, and maybe they'll do something at the deadline. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it's not necessary that they have to trade Harden. And I'm hearing rumors that Houston Rockets are not going to really entertain any kind of trade unless it really makes a uh, big sense for them. Because they also have to deal with, you know, Russell Westbrook. Because, uh, I mean, uh, he's, he's asked for a trade as well. But I think both these people are asking for trades because 
ultimately they're getting older and they all want to win a championship. Uh, even in fact, James Harden declined a fifty million dollar extension. I mean, he yeah. would have been the richest. He would have been the first player ever to probably get paid fifty million dollars a year. Yeah, you heard that right, Mr. He said fifty million down. I think you really want championship, Mr. Kumar. And they're kind of uncut. The Rockets are going, you know, having uh, traded Clint Capella. You know, Austin Rivers is unhappy. Um, PJ Tucker is unhappy. Eric Gordon is. So the Rockets are a dumpster fire right now. And I think they're trying to, you know, get out um, and try to enhance their legacies and see if they can win a championship elsewhere, Mr. Kumar, because none of these guys have won any championships so far. It's, it's a very bad situation for Tillman because, it, it, you know, uh, A, I mean, they did an experiment going really small, and that didn't work out. Uh, they got in, they shipped out uh, Chris Paul, got in Russell Westbrook. That didn't work out. And now Daryl Morey, who pretty much d d did the deal, he's shipped out. So it, it's been a crazy situation for the Houston Rockets. Uh, it, 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 and they have to pay a lot of money for two of their biggest stars. I mean, they're pretty yeah. much, uh, you know, uh, out of the $109 million salary cap, they pretty much pay 70% to two two of those players, which is Harden and Russell Westbrook. Yeah, it's crazy, you know, they can, and they're not producing, you know, on the floor, having lost in, in the second round. We got to move on, Mr. Kumar, to our favorite segment, the Indian third guy segment, the spiciest segment on YouTube, where celebrity guest, Rachi Telhan. Absolutely, and uh, welcome, Prachi. Thank welcome. you so much for being here tonight. First of all, wish you a very happy Diwali and to you and your family. And uh, I, I, I think you're coming to us live from the forest of Jim Corbett. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me. Happy Diwali to you too and to your families. And I'm really excited and very happy to be on your show. Yeah, thank you very thank much. Thank you Bhatti. so much. Very excited to have you on. And Mr. Kumar, uh, you wanna, uh, well, let, let me actually ask the first question. So, so Prachi, so how was your experiences, you know, playing basketball and netball translated to your acting career? So honestly, I had a long sporting career, which uh, included both basketball and netball. It all started because I have always been very tall since my childhood. And that's how I got into basket playing basketball and i played basketball for delhi and also attended a lot of national camps uh, played for my college played for my university for about eight years and i was in college is when netball happened to me uh, it's like when you're good at one sport you know your uh, college uh, director she encourages you to play other sports as well so that we can win that <laughs> vice chancellor trophy at the end of the day <coughs> So I was thrown to put netball, handball, basically all the ball games. So netball, I was playing for the very first time and it was a coincidence that uh, there was a national, uh, there, there were national selectors who were selecting for uh, the girls for the camp of Commonwealth Games, which happened, which was about to happen in 2010 at that time. So that's how I was selected. I was one of the finest shooters, thanks to my coach Nirula sir. And uh, uh, and I learned how to play netball in the national camp from the very scratch when I was in college. So um, at that time, I couldn't play a lot of basketball. But yes, netball happened and I played it professionally for four years for India. Also won a first silver medal for, for India under my captaincy. And after completing my MBA, I was working for Accenture is when acting happened to me. So basically, all the good things just kept happening and I just kept working hard towards it. And uh, it, in a matter of three days, I got this, you know, opportunity from a big production house on my Facebook fan page. And, you know, then I got to meet them and it finally turned out after a week that I'm watching myself on Star Plus in the Orbati Hum. And I was like, <laughs> OK, life is quite unpredictable. And it was really, really fun. Thank you so much uh, for that. But uh, I mean, let me ask you, I mean, everybody, I mean, India wants to become a star, right? In terms of uh, <clears throat> acting. I mean, you have acted in Punjabi films. We have acted in uh, films from the South, did multilingual films, Hindi uh, soap operas and 
you know, what is your favorite uh, uh, in terms of uh, either movies or doing soap operas? Mm -hmm. Movies, uh, I would say, because movies gives you that scope of, uh, uh, you know, I, I feel movies are more creative in terms of its making. Daily soap or soap operas are like a regular job. Like it's like a corporate job. You go every day, you work, you come back. But movies are more designed; they're more creative, and they are sh they the sh the duration of movies is obviously very short lived. So that is a fun and an interesting part, because uh, in a matter of two months you get over with that character. Unlike in TV, because TV it's like you are play you are living that character almost every day for more than twelve hours a day. So it kind of become a part of you. So there are pros and cons of both the things. But if you ask me, movies is something I would continue. To. Very, very interesting. What has been your favorite movie that you uh, starred in? Uh, the one in which I acted? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So uh, one of the most interesting ones was my debut, which was uh, uh, from this film, Punjabi film named as Arjun. And in terms of uh, grandeur, it was Mamangam because I got to work on, on one of the biggest Malayalam films ever being made. That to opposite the biggest superstar of South, wow. uh, Mahmoodi sir. So yes, so these two projects will always be very close to my heart. Yeah, so I am a big fan of Mamuti because I am half Malayalam, half Tamil, uh, right from Palakkad. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, but uh, Sugamano. how was it working? Sugamano. <laughs> Sugamai. Sugamai. <laughs> uh, so, how was it working with such a big superstar? Were you like overwhelmed just seeing him? Because I'm on, he has acted in maybe like thousands of films, you know, because it's either Mamuti or Mohan Lal. That's it. Those are the only two actors in Malayalam film. <laughs> you can't, I, you know, before meeting Mamuti, sir, I never had this or for any of the actors, be it Bollywood, be it Hollywood. But after working with him, uh, you know, it was like, uh, if, if somebody asked me, whom am I a fan of? I would say Mamuka. <laughs> he, uh, you know, more, more than just being a superstar, a mega star, a legend, I think he's an amazing uh, human being. The way he carries himself on the set, the way he shares his knowledge, the way he's uh, very welcoming to, to you know, open, and he's very open to talk to you about various things and you know it, that was something which really uh, you know uh, which i admire about him and he's quite friendly i mean he responds responds to your messages mm -hmm. on on various occasions so it's 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 really cool i think mamuka is really cool and the way he looks at this age is <laughs> amazing no what words for that <laughs> Did you get a chance to meet Dulkar Salman as well while of course, yet, you were acting no, with my... no, <laughs> no, I I didn't get chance to meet him, but uh, meeting father was, you know, it was like a dream come true. And working with him and making my debut with him was like amazing. Yeah, it seemed like you worked with some pretty cool celebrities, uh, you know, in these movies that you've been you've been starring in. So, Prachi, what are some of your hobbies that you like to do, like in your free time? Uh, I like to paint. Um, I like to read books. I love listening to music. And then recently, uh, during lockdown, I learned how to cook for the first time <laughs> ever in my life. And uh, yes, after marriage now, I love exploring jungles with my husband, Rohit. Uh, he's quite an adventurer. And, uh, you know, he gets me, pushes me to do things which I haven't done before and which is which are quite dangerous and adventurous at the same time. I mean, hunting for a tiger in the jungle is is something oh. I don't need to describe. <laughs> and that too, just, just on our feet. So it's quite fun. And uh, he takes me for these long walks under the hot sun. And I'm like, oh God, I'm going to get tan because I'm no more a sports person, <laughs> but an actor now. So I need to protect myself. And he'll be like, no, you have to come from here. And we are just walking besides a river and you know long walk on the mountain so it's it's quite fun i think i'm i'm quite enjoying and loving what i'm doing right now yeah uh, absolutely so i think you're in jim corbett right now enjoying the nature so uh, of course uh, so coming back to a little bit of sports uh, of course ours is an nba talk show so any favorites in terms of uh, do you follow the nba or uh, any favorite player that you have from the NBA? 
the the recent memory of uh, basketball i'll talk about is uh, the last game hello can you yeah, hear yeah, me go on yeah yeah yeah, yeah so go this, ahead, this, go ahead, yeah yeah so this uh, michael jordan series on netflix the last dance sorry i i said it wrong uh, the last mm-hmm. dance is something which i recently saw and oh god that man i think i've always loved uh, <coughs> michael michael jordan and i you know i've always been inspired by him and uh, uh, watching last da- uh, last dance was something which gives you that extra edge over what with what mentality that man used to play yeah oh god i think that that really inspired me and uh, uh yes i mean that was my recent memory to be honest uh, during the lockdown i saw it what three times with three different people oh, and wow. i pushed so many people to watch it oh my god you have to watch it you, because it is so inspiring and people who didn't even know about basketball was you know called me back and said prachi oh my god what you know this is something really interesting what you have recommended us So yes, basketball. I'll say will always be my first love. Nice. That's how my journey began, and um, whatever I am today, be it an actor or a corporate woman or whatever I'm going to be uh, in life further, um, one thing I will always be thank thankful to will be basketball. Yeah. Because that's that's where my journey began, and uh, uh, basketball. coach has given me a lot my coach nirula sir has given me a lot uh, i would i would like to share a small uh, incident what happened so i was playing this uh, match in singapore um, opposite a team um, and it was a netball match and we we unfortunately lost that match but the coach of that op- opponent team came to me and she said india has got one of the finest shooters in the world mm-hmm. nice. and this was this is when i was in college and you know from that that specific day i went back to my hotel and i called up my coach nirula sir and i told him sir thank you and he 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 asked me kyun kya hua what happened so i told him that today after a match even though we lost it the coach of the opponent team came to me and complimented me for my shooting and i had to call you up because i knew that how much you worked on my shooting style uh, when it had to be the you know the perfect um and you know even today in spite of not being in touch with basketball even if even if i have a shooting competition with somebody else i have so much of confidence that i can beat that person yeah. so yeah so that is something what my coach did to me and you know i'm always i'll always be thankful to them not just for this this is just a small experience i shared but you know developing a personality in me which taught me and which gives g- gave me this motivation to fight across various industries in my life till now so Man, yes that's awesome prachi you're an amazing player you know both basketball and netball now you have a very successful career in acting but prachi i got to ask you michael jordan or lebron james i got to put you on the spot there <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a tough one but i'll still go for uh, michael and I, i don't know i i feel that there's something about him which probably i lacked being a, being a sports person because um you know in the last dance i saw this really strong mental uh, image of, of of how how strong a person or, a, or an athlete can be mentally that is something what i learned watching him during the entire season and that is something which really motivated me that one needs to be so tough from the outside but so ambitious within i mean you know uh, th- that moment when they say that uh, michael jordan knew that there would be somebody in the crowd that who would be watching him play for the first time or the last time so he had to make sure that it is worth it i th- yeah. i mean these are these are the you know one liners or the storytelling the way they narrated it i think it is just wow and it is so more than anything else i'm sure there are a lot of controversies on that as well because a lot of players i i've read about it but uh, at the end of the day what i would like to take away from that would be an inspiration uh, a role model and all the good things what i as a person can grab from him 
that would be that would be my takeaway and i think hats off to that legend i think basketball is basketball today across the world because of michael jordan i mean the only reason shivam asked that question is because i am a big lebron james fan otherwise he wouldn't have even <laughs> asked that question right shivam exactly and i'm a michael jordan fan i think he's going to go so we have a so little <laughs> yeah so <laughs> But uh, Prachi, we want to be and Mr. Kumar have a couple of rapid fire questions that we wanted to ask you. So, Mr. Kumar, you can go ahead with the first question. Yeah, the first question is: Do you think there'll be a WNBA player from India or an NBA player from India? Ooh. Ooh. And it looks like Prachi is. Prachi's having a little bit of a technical difficulties there, but uh, but Mr. Kumar, I think that's a yeah, yeah. that's it. Oh, go ahead, Prachi. So I think WNBA has more chances of having an Indian player. Nice, nice, nice. I think Geetu Joseph was was the closest player who could you know at least go to play for the uh, international clubs. Yeah, I mean there there are a lot of. Uh... Uh, I mean, women players who have now gone to the U.S. on scholarships yeah. uh, to various colleges. So, of mm -hmm. course, uh, there is a bit of competition between the boys and the girls. Let's hope that there is a WNBA player creating history for India. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, Prachi, basketball or netball? Basketball. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I, I got to play netball because of basketball. So, basketball. So, but how was that experience captaining the Indian team in the in in the Commonwealth Games? Because it's it's you know it's like a mini Olympics, right? I mean, it's not some small event. It was held in Delhi, uh, probably for the first time in your home town, in your country. So uh, that would have been a great experience. My words will never do justice to what I felt, and I think uh, um, uh, the singing national anthem, wearing your uh, um, you know, uh, country's name on your chest and your uh, uh, family's name on your back is something which is irreplaceable. And uh, even if today I, even if tomorrow I become the biggest superstars, touch wood, but the feeling of uh, representing country in sports will will be irreplaceable. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know. No, no, that, that's for sure. That's for sure. So, Malayalam movies or Punjabi movies? Bolu sorry? <laughs> Malayalam movies or Punjabi okay. movies? Sorry. Bollywood. Malayalam Bollywood. films. Okay. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, because they have better stories there. They <laughs> have kidding, beautiful but... stories. Yeah. They have. I think yeah. Malayalam industry has the most richest content when it comes to uh, the, uh, the scripts and the storytelling. And and the kind of cinema they make technically they're so sound they are they, their pictures are just so raw and they're amazing <laughs> well, um, which part of kerala did you shoot your uh, your movie uh, the malayalam movie i shot uh, in ottapalam then i shot uh, um one more place kochi uh, mostly the sets were at the kochi, kochi. yeah kochi. okay okay mm -hmm. and did you enjoy you know uh, the food from Kerala. <laughs> of course, I I loved Kerala food and uh, I loved uh, uh, the kuttu porotha and I loved yeah. having non-vegetarian food there. Of course, <laughs> spicy, having coconut and everything. And I am a foodie, so I love exploring and I love fish there. I think if you if you got to have crazy, amazing, fresh fish, Kerala is the place for you in India. All right, absolutely. Cool. So, so the next, so the next question, Shivam, you gotta ask about the food part. Yes, exactly. That was my transition. Perfect transition, Prachi. So my favorite food is chole masala. Mr. Kumar's favorite food is butter chicken. So which one is it, butter chicken or chole masala? Wow, that is a tough one. <laughs> that too. So at this time, I'll go with butter chicken. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> See, Michael Nobody Jordan, can... I supported you. So this time it has to be him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but living in De living in Delhi, if you don't have butter chicken, it's like I mean, it's almost like a crime, you know. Like I mean, it is even even chola masala also. 
yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the charts and everything in Delhi, that, yes. those are also very, very. Oh man, yeah. and you and see, he's he, no. <laughs> uh, so we have a we, we are having Sorry, a special appearance. We have, <laughs> we have a special again. guest, the dog. <laughs> He came again. <laughs> I was saying fine. that I mean, if, if you come to Delhi, you have to visit my place and have chola bhaturas and even butter chicken. Oh, okay. my mom sure. is an amazing cook. Book it. Yeah. So, so I think I think this qualifies as an open invitation for us, right? Exactly. Yes. It is. All right. Yes. Back to Delhi. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna come. Here. So, come, come, come soon. Uh, and of course. If you come to Mumbai, you can come to my house and I'll give you some good Kerala food. I mean, the traditional Amazing. Kerala vegetarian food, because of course, no the, it's a Brahmin household, but we, okay. of course, I eat non-veg, so that's not an issue, but still. Great. So, Prachi, me being in the U.S., in Texas, I got to ask you, you know, you visited um, New Jersey, Houston, and Chicago. So, which one of those cities was your favorite? I, uh, I quite like Chicago. Uh, and New York. Okay, nice. That's what about the what about Chicago, New York? Did you like? Uh, Chicago was very peaceful uh, during the times I went, and it was just, I think, pretty uh, the down downtown side. And New York was full of fashion. Oh my god, yeah. it's like fashion everywhere you turn around. It's like wow, and pizzas of New York, amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's so long so as next, I think the dog heard the word ball earlier. <laughs> I think I think the next time you go to New York, you gotta just take your husband's credit card. That's enough. Okay. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> go on a shopping spree. Go to Fifth Avenue. Hit up all the shops. <laughs> and I and I love the outside hot dogs there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And. So I'm going to put you in a little bit of a spot. Uh, uh, so we're just drafting like an all-star team, uh, celebrity all-star team. You are definitely one of the players. Who are the other four players that you would draft? It could be male or female, of course. <laughs> OK. I would choose my Indian players. <laughs> my yeah, yeah, Indian. Players. They have to be. No, no, Indian actors who can play basketball, you know? So oh, you would have to okay, draft. OK, yeah. OK, OK. Uh, I would choose Akshay Kumar, okay. John Ibrahim, then nice. who else is the fittest? I would choose Mahesh Babu from the South Pro and Prabhas. Okay. All male, so, all I mean, male actors. <laughs> I mean, but it, it will look like as if you're being followed by four bodyguards. <laughs> I am also very tall. I'm 5'11. I'm going to give good competition to them. <laughs> uh, uh, your Bollywood celebrity crush. Um Bollywood celebrity crush. Um I would say honestly nobody. But if I have to take one name, then uh Pratik Roshan. Okay. Okay, nice. <laughs> but honestly, I didn't have a name. I just said it because you asked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. No, but what about just I would have a, a lot of names from down south, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So down I mean, south, who are, I name all the crushes from down south. The Mamuka for sure. Then uh, I have always loved Kamal Hassan, sir. Then uh, Mahesh <laughs> Babu Prabhas. And uh, and I think Dulkar is uh, another actor uh, who really attracts people with his talent. So another name. A lot of Absolutely. them actually down south, but yeah, Bollywood so, is so, the one. Yeah. <laughs> so the, so we are gonna especially broadcast this message to the entire South film industry. So they are, hope they're all listening and they you know know <laughs> that you have a big crush on them. <laughs> exactly. I hope my my husband doesn't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, see, I mean, you can have crush, right? I mean, it's not. Uh, I'm, just know, it I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's also yeah. open to. He's also open to have his own list of uh, girl crushes, so I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, 
uh, but uh, you know thank i mean thank you so much for taking your time out uh, thank you especially when you're on a holiday we didn't want to disturb you but uh, no, thank you so much amazing, for being here it was an amazing amazing fun session and thank you for having me on your show and i wish you all the best for uh, your future shows and whatever you're doing it's quite interesting and for uh, i just wanted to pinpoint that i love the poster you've made of patel and uh, kumar uh, uh, talk show Thank you. Yeah, I, but but there's one last question. I mean, there's one last question. Yeah, Patel uh, or Kumar? We gotta Patel add. Patel or Kumar? <laughs> that is, this is the one in which you put me on the spot. So I'll go with both. Mr. I Kumar, Mr. Kumar, she really I, wanted, she really wanted to say Patel, but she didn't want to hurt your feelings on camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mr. Kumar. Okay. No, I love both uh, of you, yeah. and you both but, are I mean, adorable. Let me tell you, all the ladies who come onto the show choose Patel, and you know, uh, all the men who come choose me. I don't know for what reason, but that's how. It is. <laughs> I'll take it, Mr. Kumar. I I choose both of you. <laughs> I appreciate thank you. you. Well, thank you for coming on, and best of luck you know, in your future endeavors. And uh, we're excited to see you know where where you're going to be. So thank you very much. And, and uh, if you want to uh, give a message out to the people where they can follow you or uh your instagram handles and stuff like that please you can you're more than welcome well i'm everywhere there with the with same name prachi tehlan my surname is quite uh, uncommon so you'll get only one prachi tehlan on google on instagram on facebook on twitter so yes you can follow me there and if you have any questions you can uh, dm it to me i'm quite responsive and i respond to all the decent and in and decent messages right. <laughs> everybody you heard it hit her up hit up prachi <laughs> yeah and hit has up to and yeah. patel and kumar uh yes. we are trying to be as equally popular as prachi uh but we just hope that That's we can take a reach, while. <laughs> uh, the number of followers that she has so even your fans shristi a uh, big shout out a big fan she's a big fan of yours so thank you to all the fans for tuning in as well Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, everyone. I thank love you, you Prachi. Thank you so much, thank both you. of you. you thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hosts, and I loved interacting with you. It was. It didn't feel as if it was an interview. Interview. I think it was a fun, interactive session, and that's how it should be. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy your vacation. Enjoy the in the enjoy job. the rest of your vacation. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Enjoy your time in the jungle. Well, Mr. Kumar, thank you. That was a great conversation <laughs> with uh, Prachi Telhad. We talked about a variety of things. They went by so fast. We learned a lot, you know. Um, and it was it was a great it was a great interview and great having her on the show. Even though, Mr. Kumar, I didn't know any of the of the South Indian uh, actors and actresses that you guys were talking about, but it was good. Yeah, overall. I know. But but Karan Oja asked Patel and Kumar, which club, according to you two, won this NBA draft? So for me, it's got to be the Hornets getting Lamelo Ball and the Warriors getting James Wiseman. Yeah, and I, I feel it's uh, Minnesota and uh, uh, the Golden State Warriors, uh, in my opinion. But uh, again, I've been telling from the start, this is a lottery, and if these players can develop on to become superstars. that's that's just good that's just going to be very lucky for these teams but you know connect with us on twitter and instagram at patel and kumar and you know message us with your comments hit up with your all your messages and we'll try to respond uh during the show or uh, live and uh you know also sub also like share and subscribe the ekalavia's youtube channel because that's where you're going to catch us live on thursdays uh with the new timing which is 8 p.m. india time right and also as this, we're going to have a special edition draft episode on december 3rd um and then starting our uh, season 2 on december 22nd but then after that this is a pertinent show reminder me and mr kumar are going to be go on every other thursday every two weeks um as we get the season on and remember to like share and subscribe to the patel pick and roll sports youtube channels but mr kumar we got a special ending some diwali meme so i'll let you take it away I I don't know because we were having a little bit of technical issues. I don't know if we're going to we're going to be able to show that, but uh if you're able to show it it's uh you know just messages from Harrison Barnes of the Sacramento Kings. Uh we had Sasha 
you know, Vujovic, uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Vujovic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, we had a lot of images uh, from the basketball courts being lit up in India. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We'll see you in our next episode on December the 3rd, 8 p.m. India time. And that'll be on the free agency signings. And of course, we'll be live again uh, on 22nd of December with the first show of the season. And let's go with a bang. So happy yes. Diwali once again. Happy, happy Diwali. New Year. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Adios. Yep.